Thank you for visiting our channel. Today I came out to review and also quick unbox this awesome looking box. This is called Max Series 2 and it is from Tangula. Now I have to mention that this is the Elite Series. So it has a lot of little apps on this box. Now this video is for YouTube friendly. So if you want to watch the full review, it will cover all these little apps inside of it. And you can find that at the bottom of this video. You have to remember that this one is coming with Android 11. It is 5G network. And on top of that, it has four gigabyte of RAM, 128 gig internal storage, a gigabit LAN. And I do not want to forget, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, click to click the subscribe button. Make sure you share this with your friends and family. Make sure you click the notification icon so like all in order to get notified once we have a new video out. On top of that, if you have a question, drop them at the bottom of the video. We love to help you out ASAP. And don't forget to click to click the like button. That really motivates us to make these type of videos quickly with a little more detail every time. In here are all the components that are part of the box. It comes with this user manual. It does indicate on top that which series it is. Also it says user guide once you open it. It has all of the information you really, really need on how you can set up your box. And when you look in the back, it has a bunch of information and notice in the bottom. It also comes with another manual, which is really cool. It talks about how this box has been set up. And also if you need to set up anything extra on it, even the storage, or you want to go to Wi-Fi is on this manual. Now, now this is more in detail so this way you can set up more you're going to learn more about your box which we try to cover in this video but it has all inside of this user manual it does come with an HDMI cable also a little USB type A to USB type C charging wire also comes with this power adapter. This part will go to the box itself. It's a little bit bigger. And this is 5 volt 2 amps created for Canada in United States. And it also comes with this IR remote, which is a generic one that comes with the Android box. Let me just take it out. Now it is inside of a little plastic. Once you take it out, this is how it really looks. From the top, you have the power, and then also you can set up your TV using the IR section, and the manual is written in the back on how you can set it up. The IR part is in the back. Also, you have a little part that you can open for two AAA batteries there. Very easily can open and close. And when you look in the front, you have everything else set up, so this way you can play with it. Your navigation key, your volume, also help. The apps button, home button, buttons there too, return key, menu, static mouse and numeric buttons in the back, also the mute button and the delete button. Now this is IR so you have to point it to the box in order to use it. Now this box comes with this nice remote. Now you have to remember that this one is called R1 Air Mouse Remote, which is really cool. And it's called Ultra 10 for a reason. Now remember that with an older ones, they used to provide a W3 Air Mouse Remote. This is the one that requires a dongle. So the actual remote, the old one looks like this. And when you go to the back, you have full keyboard, but there is a little USB dongle that came with it, which looks like this to make this remote really work. Now let's unbox this remote and see what's involved. Now for this one, again, same way, you have to open it either from the top and the bottom. To make it simple, we will go from the bottom and then we will take it out. So this one also have similar USB on the top. That means as it's not Bluetooth, and this one will be working similar way with an older type of remote. I really like it that it has a little plastic right on the top that you can take off. For the meantime, just going to leave it the same. And this way we can compare it with the older remote that we have. So you can see that just the marking is not there, but the buttons are created a little bit better. And the icons are a little bit dimmer on the color part of it. But once you go to the actual remote, you can see the mic is there, return key, the navigation key is there, and also the power button. I really like how it's been designed now. The other one was a little bit different. But once you go to the back, similar way, it's the same design when it comes to the keyboard in the back. So it looks a lot better. And we will be playing with the new one. So we will just leave it here. And then once we go through the actual box, we will connect the USB and then play with it to see how good this remote is. Now another plus sign is that with this remote there is a little manual that comes in. Now this box also comes with a little antenna which is attachable and we're going to attach it and show you how that is. 
The big moment is the actual box sitting inside of a little plastic and let's just take it out. Once you take it out, this is how the box really looks. I really like how they have managed to make it and so small. Again, this is really cool on how this has been set up. Certain things I'm not really a fan of. So let's just go through and capture it and tell you exactly how this is. All right, so from the top, you can see their name is written really nicely. And it's kind of mixture of plastic and metal. I really like how they have managed to put it together. I do not really know that if it is really metal or not, but it's pretty cold. But in, it's not in a heavy part, but it's not bad, I should say. I really like that little cut that they have placed all the way around. It's chiseled properly. And when you look in the front, you have a little part, and you can see these are just prints. So it's blue. And then inside of it, you will be able to see the time and more. Now, when you go on one side of it, it has really nice writing. It will tell you exactly what these are. So there's a TF card reader, which can read up to 128 gigabyte. And then there's a USB 3. 0.0 port and right in the edge you can see that it's USB 2.0 and there is a little writing to it now that's not I'm really a fan of because it's in a corner going on the back part of it you have a gigabit LAN you also have a HDMI connection you also SPDIF which is optical audio connection for your older type of stereo system and then 5 volt 2 amps connection and then the antenna part which we have it handy and let's just hook it up right now and this way you can see it so remember that with the antenna, you can pull it all the way through and this way it's not going to come out. You can see that. I really like the way that they have designed this and this way you're going to get your internet properly. Going on one side of it, you have a lot of holes for ventilation, but once you go to the bottom, you have more holes for ventilation. You have a little sticker that will tell you exactly which box it is, which series it is, how many gigabyte of rom and ram you have and then you also your dc connection just in case if you misplace it or cut it how you're going to be able to figure it out which one you have to order from online that will really help you out there is a little sticker for your mac address which i have covered it and there is four little legs which is rubber so this way when you put it on the actual table and you want to move it yeah it does move so if you put heavier cable in the back it will move a little bit but not a lot so it's really cool to have something like this and I've said about it, let's get this connected. And now for CEC purposes, we will connect the HDMI first and then the power. And you wanna use that remote, so you need to hook up the dongle to it too. And that's how the box really looks once you put the dongle. And then in the front, you will see the time. So it's not totally booted, that's why you see it this way. Once you turn it on, this is the first screen you will see. And yes, the animation do have a little sound and you will get to the disclaimer so once you're here you have to select agree and this is the first screen you will see so it is already preloaded with all of the shortcuts in the bottom but let's just go through quickly show you what's involved so from the top you have the bluetooth is connected now if you look on the right hand side you have time and date which is perfectly done and then you have the tang tv which is a huge icon by the way on the screen as usual then you have the regular youtube app and then the kdmc which is their media player also you have the firefox as your browser you can also change the wallpaper on this in file and then apps and settings and these are just shortcuts and there's one let's just go one by one and see if we can cover it quickly number one is wallpaper now by default it does come with some different wallpapers as you can see right now so if i want to change it this is the one that is right now on and i want to change it to this one so if i as soon as you click on it and then you press back it changes to this one it just takes a couple of seconds and now it's changed which is really cool but i just want to keep it the same and simple so this way all of the videos will happen there you go and i will just get back out and my background is normal so this is how it's done now another thing is your settings and also applications so now by default the apps that are inside of it is just the default one so we didn't install anything yet we will do it in a couple of seconds but this is how easy it is to process it the first thing we're going to launch will be youtube 
Now by default, as soon as you load it, it will be on 1080p, but you can change it by going to the settings, and then you can change it to 4K. So this is 2K, this is 1K, which is 1080p, 2K, and then 4K. So let's change it to 4K and see how it looks. Actually, it looks way better. But this is not it. Let's just change it a little bit more geeky. And now you can see on the top that this is 1080p. There is only three frame drops. And this is running on 4K and 24 frames per second. But you can see that the Kodak is VP9 and OPUS. So the colors are very vibrant. There's really small amount of frame drops right now, which is three. But the rest is nice and clear. This is really cool because it is very powerful box. So this is for YouTube. The next thing we will launch will be AIDA64. Well, they also called it IDA64. So you can see that the name is written properly. And then the, bro the brand name is also written properly, which is AM Logic. The name and model is Max Series 2. Now, if you go down, you have four gigabyte of RAM. How much is available? Is right over here and then the internal storage is 128 gigabyte and you can see how much is available the rest is taken care of by the partition also the pre-installation of the software and on top of that some apps that we are installing now if you look this one is the internal storage if you see this one this is the SD card that we installed on it so we can play some videos on it and the Bluetooth on this says 4x when you go to CPU, it is four core processor. It is Cortex A55 running on 2004 megahertz, 64 bit ARM, but is running on 32. The four cores and the ones that are running and the ones that are sleeping is right over here. You can see the CPU utilization does not go over 25%. Scaling governor is scheduled. When you go to display, this is native resolution 1080p running on 60 DPI or 61 DPI. It is ARM and the GPU on this is Mali G31, which is a single core processor running on 60 frames per second. And the OpenGL on this is 3.2. Now under network, you can see that over here that says that 5G band is supported, which is really cool. And that's what we are looking for. Now under Android, this is running Android 11. API level is 30. And here is a terminal which will show you the temperature for the actual chip, for the RAM, and battery. Since this does not have a battery, it's just going to be the SOC, which is going to be the regular chip. On this, the AM logic and then DDR is for RAM. So it does not go over 57, basically. Now, when you go to Codex, there is tons of Codex on this side, which is really cool. And you can see them all on the list. Now we have to understand that there are some codecs that you guys are looking for, which this box does not carry. But the ones that is very mandatory for you to have, this one do have it. Now one of the main one is called AV1, and that is the latest chip and the decoding some of these new videos. So that is right over here is H264, VP9, VP8, MPEG4, and then H263. Now if I have to go up a little bit, you will find AV1. That's the one we are looking for. And it's right over here. So yes, AM Logic, this is the latest version of it. And it will be covering that part. A lot of boxes do not have this. This one do have regular AVC and AV1. And this is what a lot of boxes are missing. This one have it. And it will work a lot better. So once we go to video player, let's see if this will really detect and play the videos accurately for us. Now the next thing we're going to launch will be Geekbench 5. Now we have already processed this and for single core we received 142 and for multi-core we received 499 which is a really good number for this box. 499 is a really good good number by the way. But yes, it does work perfectly. The next thing we will launch will be VLC. There you go. I just wanted to bring up the volume a little bit. So this is the 1080p version of the video, which is really good. Again, it plays it perfectly for us. I'm going to bring the volume down a little bit so there's no stop to it. And you can see that there's no choppiness, nothing. So this part is good. 
and this is the 4K version, the one that we filmed in Niagara Falls. Again, the map is very big. It has a lot of little particles and details inside of it. That's why we try to pick something like this to play all the time. And there is no stop to it. There's no pixelization. That's what we are really, really positioned to look for and make sure that there isn't anything wrong with this part. Now let's go to another video. Now this is the 4K and 10 bit. It looks really good and let's just bring up the sound a little bit and I don't have an issue even with the sound it's perfectly there so there is no stop to it the colors are right there's no pixelization and it plays it very nice and smoothly so this do pass the 4k and 10 bit very nice and quickly now the next thing we're going to go to will be speed test and for speed test we already processed it two with the Wi-Fi 6 and two with just landline so with the Wi-Fi 6, you can see the first one that we tried, we received 238 for my download. And there's not much arcs just going up and down. It's very minimal. You can see that going all the way through. And it stayed on 238. And then when we did the upload, it's exceeding, which is we have 53 megabits. And it looks like it's almost there. So that's really good. And then the ping is very low. And that's what we are always, always talking about with different boxes that the ping should be under 20, which will be better. That means faster connection. And then when we tried it for a second time, the download rate went down a very little bit and same thing with the upload. But you can see that it doesn't have that much of an arc going through and the idle time still lower than 20, but it's just one number higher than before. Again, this is running on Wi-Fi. So this part do depend on what type of router you have not modem router. I would not suggest that you use modem router or the one that the ISP provided for you to use. This way you have more functionality and more handling on how your Wi-Fi will work. So it depends on which one you're going to get. If you read on top, it will tell you the exact amount of upload and download right on top of it. And when you're buying your own router, that way at least you know, okay, what type of speed you're getting. So you're not going to buy a $25 to $50 from AliExpress and expecting to get a gigabit Wi-Fi out of it. And there's nothing like that anyways. So you should be getting roughly about 300 megabit, a little bit higher than that too. 350 should be okay on Wi-Fi. Now, when we connect it on landline, Remember, this one has a gigabit LAN connection to it. We received 864, and you can see that it went up a little bit to 400 and went dip down to 200 and start going back up to 864, which is, again, really good number. Now, when it comes to the upload rate, it was really staying still on 46.4, and my idle time still under 20, which is really good. Now, when we did it for very last time, my download rate was really good, which was 916. That means as my gigabit went up to almost 1.5 gigabit speed, that's why it went over the 800 megabits. And then my upload rate stayed to 52.5, which is again really good and doesn't have that much arcs. And my idle time went down to a beautiful number, which is 15 again. That means as the Kodak's on this, or should I say the actual drivers for Wi-Fi and for LAN on this box works like charm. And it looks like this one will be one of the favorite boxes to make sure works, by the way. And it will be awesome to play with. All the links will be available in the bottom of this video where you can order this from, except that this was our take. I hope you guys like our video. If you do like it, click the click the like button, subscribe button on the top, comment in the bottom. Always remember to visit our own website, which is exitex.info. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and other social networking places. And thank you.